All right. What a beautiful day. All right. So we're in our study of the Fifth Agreement, and this week it's being impeccable with the Word. So I thought I would just share um, some church bulletin bloopers where maybe the Word has not been exactly presented the way it was meant to be. Okay, so here we go. For those of you who have children and don't know it, we have a nursery downstairs. (laughs) This coming Easter Sunday, we will ask Mrs. Lewis to come forward and lay an egg on the altar. (laughs) Next Sunday, a special collection will be taken to defray the cost of the new carpet. All those wishing to do something on the carpet should come forward and do so. Today's sermon, How Much Can a Man Drink, with hymns from a full choir. (laughs) The pastor would appreciate it if the ladies of the congregation would lend him their electric girdles for the pancake breakfast next Sunday morning. (laughs) Thursday night, potluck supper, prayer and medication to follow. (laughs) Low self-esteem support group will meet Thursday at 7 p.m. Please use the back door. The eighth graders will be presenting Shakespeare's Hamlet in the church basement on Friday at 7. The congregation is invited to attend this tragedy. (laughs) At the evening service tonight, the sermon topic will be, What is Hell? Come early and listen to our choir practice. And last but not least, don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. (laughs) See what happens when we're not impeccable with our word. All right. So let's review. Let's review. So last week, we set the context for this book study where we talked about how we're domesticated. We're domesticated as human beings because we're raised in a family, most of us. We've been taught by our parents. We've been taught by our teachers. We've been taught by our siblings, our clergy. We've been taught the meaning of symbols, right? Symbols meaning a language, you know, what our sounds Um, our handwriting, our alphabet, everything. Everything in this room is a symbol for something, and we've learned what it is. Okay? So we've learned, and we've agreed to what we've learned. Right? All right. So our journey is, is we keep learning, and we keep learning, and we keep trying to make sense of the world around us and our place in it by what we've learned and what we continue to learn. The tricky part is that we learn and we learn and we learn and we learn all these symbols, but we also learn with what we've been taught, people's opinions about things, people's interpretations about things. And in those interpretations and in those opinions, sometimes what we have learned, we turn against ourselves, right? Because sometimes we're told we're not maybe good enough, or we can't do that right. Maybe we're not good in math. Maybe we're not an artist. Maybe we're not, and fill in the blank. And we believed it at some level, maybe, some of us. I'm sure none of these children have ever believed anything limiting about yourself, right? Ever. Okay, no. Okay. All right. And so what happens is that we start to become aware that we've turned the word against ourselves. And we long to be free. We long to once again know the truth because, see, it never quite feels right. Because inherently, we know there's a place in us that always remembers what we are. That we were brought into this world with original blessing, original innocence, regardless of anything that we've been told, regardless of anything that we believe that's contrary to that truth, 
there is that knowing within us, and it rubs up against when we have turned the word against ourselves. So we feel this inner conflict. We feel like unsettled. And so we long to once again have that peace that comes with the knowing. And so today, we're talking about being impeccable with our word. Impeccable meaning that we never, ever, ever use it against ourselves. And when we are impeccable with our word, what's available is happiness and joy and flow that we can look in the mirror and we can behold the magnificence that we are. So we're going to do a little exercise this morning. And so I just invite you to hold up your right hand. Just hold up your right hand. Now turn your head toward that right hand and pretend that you're holding a mirror in that right hand. And I want you to look into that mirror. And what do you see? Now pretend that you're just getting up in the morning and maybe you haven't had a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And look in that mirror and what do you think? What do you say? Okay, you can put your hand down now. Okay, is it always kind? No. No. And especially those of us as, you know, that think we have a sixth to eighth grader that still is alive in us, but the mirror is not exactly reflecting that. Right? Because we're, we, we're so joyful inside, but we look and we go, gosh, who is that person? And we talked about that around the directory pictures that we took. Okay. All right, so now hold up your left hand. There's a mirror in your left hand, and turn your face toward that mirror. Now, this is your divine essence talking to you. Look in this mirror through the lens of your divine essence, and what do you see? What do you see? You can put your hand down now. What do you see? I want to hear. Fabulousness. Wisdom. 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 Okay. Joy. Joy. Yes. Fuzziness. Fuzziness. <laughs> oh, uh, I was just. Oh, you're just waving your fuzzies. Okay. <laughs> Talent. Talent. Happiness. Happiness. Okay, want to hear? Millionaire. Millionaire. All right. Okay. One more. Excitement. Excitement. What about mojo liciousness? Now I think that covers the gamut. Yeah. So, we are exploring living life from our knowing of what we are and expressing it in the words that we speak. First and foremost, folks, to ourselves. You know, I can remember that um, I grew up in a house full of women, and three women, and there was one bathroom. Okay, you can imagine. Okay. And unfortunately, what, what resulted is that we were late pretty much everywhere we went. <laughs> and so now, when I'm running late, and I used to get really upset about it, because we'd walk in late to things, you know. And as a child, it was like, oh. And I can be, I have been, really hard on myself when I'm late. And I remember I had this moment. It was years ago, and I was driving, of course, down 66. And, and I was late, and it was traffic. You know, I hadn't really allowed enough time. And I started listening to my inner dialogue. It was not the nicest. 
It wasn't. And I had an awakening in that moment. I had an aha, and I said, you know what? I might be running late, but it's going to be okay. I'm not a bad person because I'm running late. And I'm going to stop this self-talk that I would not want anyone else to have said to them. We can be pretty brutal with ourselves, can't we? Yes. So when we're impeccable with our word, we're paying attention to what we say to ourselves and also to others. And that leads us to the conversation of gossiping. Gossiping, you know those conversations that you have at the water fountain or out in the parking lot at church. Or in school, on the playground, or in class, out in the hallway when you're in the middle of changing classes. You know, you might talk about people, right? And has anyone ever felt what it's like to be talked about? It doesn't feel very good, does it? It really hurts your heart. Yeah. And so the authors of this book say, folks, gossip hurts. And honestly, I have never seen anything hurt a community more than gossip. So this is an opportunity for us to be mindful in our day-to-day lives of what we are saying to ourselves and what we are saying about and to others. So what this calls us to do is to be really awake and aware moment to moment, to moment. And again, the result of being impeccable with our word is that we create heaven on earth. Yeah. Because nothing's in the way of expressing the love that we are. Our words stop us a lot, folks. And again, it's all that inner dialogue that we say that sometimes more often than not, really, not our own voice. So being impeccable with our word calls us to be oh so ever aware of ourselves and our lives. All right. So this week, we're going to practice being impeccable with our word, aren't we, everybody? I love that. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in your life, especially in those places where we're hard on ourselves, and you know where they are in your life, you know where they are, I'm just going to invite you to be more aware and to just say, be gentle and compassionate, but also say, stop. Stop. I love myself, I'm a good person. Everything's going to be all right. So this week, I just invite you to pay attention like you haven't paid attention before. Keep working with your journaling. Where are you not impeccable with your word? And how can you be impeccable with your word? Because again, we're talking about those beliefs that we hold that are self-limiting. And we're working on those, aren't we? Yes. And know that you have a spiritual community here that will support you and love you on this journey. So, are we going to be impeccable with our word? Yes. And with our thoughts? Yes. And with our beliefs? Yes. Okay. Let's affirm together. I am impeccable with my word. And so it is. So it is.